he has drawn me. He's drawn another guest that's in the audience. He's uh, really big around the world. Miguel Angel Reyes. Woo! Hi. Hello. How's everybody doing? And um, LA Magazine, our good friend Al, Frank Al and Christina Al sent me this. And I love Al because I have this new found friendship with an 83 year old and it's I want to write a play about it because it's really special but he sent me this and I opened it up and you're in here as one of the they're, they're calling it the art stars and I met you years ago we've worked together you've drawn me I'll show the picture in a minute but there was something that I was reading about your bio before you talk about your art that is very resonates with what's going on and you talk about as a child and I don't have the quote up right now but essentially you were saying as a kid you grew up in Col Colima? No, I was actually born in Colima which is in central Mexico. Uh, the closest thing you can think about is Puerto uh, Vallarta is close enough to that. Is the state, is the state next to it. Uh, but I, was, I didn't grow up there. I grew up in Tijuana and in San Diego later on when we first immigrated. And I've been in L.A. for 34 years since I went to college. But there was something you read in a, on your website on the bio that I read about that you, rem you vividly remember before you had um, migrated to the States of hearing footsteps on your oh. front porch. If you could just talk about that, well, which is so relevant. Well, this is what it is. is uh, uh, in Tijuana, when I was a kid from age, let's say, 7 to about 10 years old, we lived a block and a half away from the borderline. So uh, we would see people crossing our street all the time. Families, California people. How do you call it? La Linea, yes, La Linea. <laughs> it, we used to call it El Otro Lado, the other side. That's what we called it. We never called it the US or San Diego, El Otro Lado. And, uh, and so for a long time, we would see families crossing or we have, we, uh, my father would always have people stop over, or relatives from my mother's side, my dad's side, they would all stay with us before they crossed the border. And later on, we, was, we um, grew up in San Isidro from age 10 to ni uh, 19, and we had the same thing, situation. We had people crossing over, family members would cross and stay at our place, or people would hide behind our apartment hmm. all the time. And it was, wow. it was really a good uh, <coughs> hiding area for everybody to go across. Wow. So we had that. Wow. But, but the vivid memory that I had of a relative was that she crossed the border, and it was a uh, rainy season, so she came up all with mud all the way up to her neck. Oh my God! Oh. Uh, her and the other person who crossed her over. Yeah, that's a vivid memory. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Um, wow. But your work, your art, you, I've been the subject of it and twice. Mm, twice, and <laughs> this is a recent one or fairly recent two years ago. one. And the reason, the the way that. Um, Miguel works, at least it, how we work, we, it was in this living room, yes. and you literally take a picture of me, and you sketch out on like marker pens, just the silhouette, and you go home and you fill it all in, and I'm like, this really looks like me, and it's crazy. Well, yeah. what I do is I, I like to do a, a quick sketch of the model, it, and I always have, want to have the model to be very comfortable, so it's up to them to be... Alcohol. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no drinking, no drugs, nothing involved like that. I always ask, uh, before they come over, they know they're going to be either going to be nude or they're going to have implied nudity or they're going to be in a bathing suit or jockstrap or it's going to be sensual or it's going to be triple X and have all those situations happen. And also, if they want to uh, pose with another model, whether it be romantic or actually having sex. Ooh. So that's another option <laughs> for those out there who are ready. <laughs> Juicy. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, that's how I get my kicks. I don't. I really don't have a lot of sex myself, but I do like to see other people have sex <laughs> and draw it and draw it. Draw it and uh, yeah. So we don't really need to ask where your inspiration comes from. <laughs> <laughs> from my lower half. <laughs> from the two heads. <laughs> But giving it awesome. this world pride, I mean, did you have a period that you had to think about, like, wow, the style of art that I like to produce is pretty erotic out there, given my back, I don't know what, you know, your background was, but did you have you, an, a moment when you tipped over and said, I'm just going to do the work that I want to produce? No, I always wanted just to draw people, uh, portraits and figures, but... Uh, this is only part of my work. I also do uh, commission work, and I've done murals for the city, Los Angeles. LACMA? No, not LACMA. Or, or, no, 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 no. Okay. No, I've done just murals in general throughout the city, uh, like uh, four or five of them. 
I uh, did an AIDS mural back um, about 15, 20 years ago in, uh, in Lincoln Park, which is uh, just north of Los Angeles. And, uh, and that was a, like a big, uh, they, they, they looked for all the Latino artists in the city and then they picked a few people. Um, the last mural that I did just recently was, uh, it was a mural at next to Olvera Street, which is the oldest part of the LA, um, Los Angeles. And there's, it's a new project called uh, The Plaza Village. And they were wanted the museum next to it is a Latino museum, a Mexican museum. They wanted an inspirational mural for um, the Latino community. So I eventually did a, a mural about uh, immigrants, and I actually got to use my whole family in it. And they were oh. the characters. So they wanted That's to do awesome. how they started. Uh, they said one of the characters was the uh, healer, which is the, the grandmother, then the nurse, and then the doctor. So it was like three generations progressing in a traditional uh, way, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing has happened like that in my family, but it's pretty close. My mother did, uh, was a corandera, but she was, she was practiced, uh, an apprentice to a corandera when she was a kid. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah, she did that. And on this skate, World Pride, you're here in New York. Yes. Um, any thoughts that you want to share with, like, what, what do you want? Well, I, I, I love uh, coming to New York. This is my place that I come once a year to just draw. But also, uh, like, uh, I'm also a photographer, so I like to take pictures of everywhere I go. Photographs everywhere, document everything that I see. And I actually was at the Folsom East, uh, and I took a lot of pictures. And then I'm going to be at the parade, and hopefully at Pride, uh, the Pride Island. So, and, I, and I love it. It's a seeing of different kinds of people from everywhere is uh, fantastic. I love it. When we've known Great. each other, and you've shot me for years and years. I love it. People can follow you at what? Uh, I only do Facebook. I'm an old person. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't. Who? I actually have one picture on my Instagram, one photo only, and but I have like 200 tags from other people who have drawn, so they tag me there. That's the only reason why I have it. So people oh. can tag you. See, people can tag <laughs> you. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much, Miguel. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having Thank me. Absolutely. Yeah.